everyone, welcome back. This is part two of my mini series on Microsoft 365 post exploitation with Graph Runner. I'm gonna give the YouTube disclaimer again that this is all for educational purposes and I have permission to run all of these commands and uh, yeah, only do this if you are allowed to and YouTube, please don't take my video down. In the last video, we talked about Graph Runner, how to use it, how to authenticate, and then we also ran some basic recon modules. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on persistence. So what happens when you lose your initial foothold? When you get into an environment and you gain that foothold, it's a really good idea to set up some redundancy there. To have a fail-proof second case, plan B, whatever you wanna call it, in case you lose access to the first account, you need a backup. So we are gonna go over the modules that Graphener has to provide you with that. Let's get started. All right, I have PowerShell pulled up here and I am already authenticated to my 365 account. First command we are gonna run is invoke graph recon. This is a little bit of a review. We ran this in the last video and it's gonna spit out a lot of information. I want you to pay attention to this authorization policy info section. We can see that create app registrations is set to true. That is its default behavior. So if you do find an account and it has the app registration turn to true, it's not that surprising. Now, what does this have to do with persistence? Well, if you do register an application, you are gonna set all of its permissions and that application is also going to get its own application token. That token can be used if you lose access to your account and that is your backup, that's your second foothold. Now, the command to run that or create the app registration is going to be invoke inject OAuth app. We're going to name it Windows or just Win Defend 365. This is just for demonstration. Next, we need to set the reply URL. This reply URL is where that OAuth code is going to go. We're going to need to intercept that. So reply URL. And we'll be setting this to our local host. And the port we are going to use is 8000. The next step is going to be scope. Luckily, Graph Runner has some predetermined scope options. One that we are going to use is called OP Backdoor. This has a number of different permissions, but you can also specify these individually if you prefer. And then lastly, of course, we have to add the tokens. All right, it looks like it was successful. You can see the blue font here. Another module ran called invoke auto OAuth flow. This is important because it just completes the rest of the process for this. This gets kicked off by default when you use the local host as the reply URL, and then it's gonna save that app token in a variable called app tokens, and those can be used later. So now you have another way to access this environment, which brings us to our second demonstration. I'm gonna clear this so that we have a nice clean space here to run our next command, get dynamic groups and our token. We also ran this command in our last video and we saw that we have this group ID, our group name is dynamic admin group and the membership rule is gonna be whatever contains admin. So if the username contains admin, it's gonna add that user to the group. We're gonna do invoke, invite guest token, and a display name. So we're adding just a completely different account from this tenant, naming it she networks. And we are setting the email to one that I have already created called she networks admin at proton.me. We're gonna set this, just leave it blank. We're gonna send the email invite, so true. We're gonna also leave this body message blank. And we can see the external user invite was sent. I'm gonna go over to my Proton inbox, refresh it, and we do have an email from Microsoft, a little invitation. We will need to accept this invitation. And here on the Azure portal, we can actually get an overview of the users that are on this tenant and we will look for the one that we just added. There we go. We want to look at the group memberships to make sure that dynamic group did work. And there we have it. Dynamic group 
the admin. So that account was automatically sent to that admin group. Now you have the permissions for that group. Let's go back to PowerShell here and run our next command, get updatable groups. And this command is gonna spit out all of the groups that you are able to modify, which is nice because you can add, remove, modify these groups. Take this next gen team one, for instance, we need the group ID and we also need our user ID. So we're gonna run another command called get user object ID at our tokens. And this is gonna spit out our user ID for the account that we've compromised, adding the email address. There we go, copy that too. Now let's update a group. Invoke add group member tokens. Group ID is gonna go first. You're just gonna copy that group ID right after here. And then next we're gonna wanna add our user ID. And we see that the member was added successfully. Let's check can refresh teams here and see at the bottom the next gen team. We could also check the Azure portal, but this is also a good verification step. And this is great because now you can look at all of those messages in those Teams chats. In this video, we have one more demonstration to run Invoke Security Group Cloner. This will allow you to clone any of the security groups, including all of the participants in there, its name. And then, as you can see here, we're gonna enter a group name that we wanna clone. I'm gonna find one. I think the obvious one here should be administrators. We're gonna type that in. Do you wanna add the current user? Yes, of course. And then do you wanna add a different user? Yes, I will add my She Networks admin user as well. Do you wanna change the group name? We wanna keep it the same. No, and there we go. Security group administrators created successfully. What's great about this is that when the administrators create new resources, they're going to need to add security groups to those resources. And now there's two different administer security groups. So they might end up just clicking the one that you have added yourself to. We didn't have a chance to run all of the commands for persistence in this video. So please go ahead and check out the links at the description below. There are so many more modules and I know Bo is adding more, but I really just wanted to cover some of them to get you started. I will see y'all in the next video. It will be our last video in the series where we're gonna cover pillaging. So I will see you there. Bye.